good morning, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and my craft table. So today I wanted to try a little bit of just experimenting and playing around. So a couple of things that I have here on the craft table. On this panel here, I used the 0.4 black Cricut pen and had it draw some balloons for me. And I want to color these with alcohol markers just to see if this ink is alcohol marker friendly. Then I have my extra fine point black pen. This is the 0.3 millimeter. And I had the Cricut draw out some party hats. And I have no idea, to be honest with you, if these are two different types of inks. Um, Maybe it's just me, but somehow I feel like this is felt and this is ballpoint. And maybe it just is because of the barrels and I'm used to pens being like that. With Maybe they're the exact same ink. I don't know. <laughs> but what I want to try out is to see if these inks are alcohol marker friendly. And then I have my stamping inks. Now this is just a... Um, Archival Pigment Ink Pad. I got this at um, Michael's and it's okay. I have I do have to stamp the image several times to get the deep black that I really want, but it's been fine. Um, I don't do a ton of stamping. I'm just starting to get into that realm, but this has been okay. I want to see if this plays nicely with alcohol markers. And then I just purchased my stays on solvent ink, uh, jet black. This will, um, this is permanent. So it's fast drying solvent ink. It's supposed to be permanent and waterproof. And like for this particular ink pad, I could stamp onto acetate or vellum. And once it dries, you know, then it wouldn't smear or anything. So that's one reason why I got it. I do have a couple of other inks that I had ordered, but they hadn't come in yet. And I had the time today to record this video, so I thought I would go ahead and just test out four, four different things with my alcohol markers. And I actually have two different sets of alcohol markers. I have my brand new set that I purchased from Altenew. These are fantastic. So I purchased these while these were on sale. These larger um, bundles here, they come in sets like this is set A and they go quite up through the alphabet. And so my thought is I want to start collecting these sets, this is set A, um, as my teacher paycheck affords, they have a brush tip and a fine tip. So they're dual tip, just like the other style markers. And I love the way they feel in my hands. So again, I purchased these. This is not a necessarily a review video or any kind of sponsored video at all. I'm really just wanting to see if my alcohol markers play nice with different types of ink. I do know that there's other ones. There's the Copic markers, there are the Olo markers, and there are the Ohuhu markers. But I wanted to test out the Altenew markers. The other set of alcohol markers, these are my first set of alcohol markers that I ever purchased. And I just got these at Hobby Lobby. When I got them, they were also on sale. They have a chisel nib and a bullet nib, and they're called the Fine Touch, and they're alcohol markers. They come in a variety of colors. They do have a gold and a silver. I've used these quite a bit to make some gorgeous cards. Um, I should show you some of the cards that I have made with these. You might really like those. I may have to drag those out here in just a second. But they also have a color chart here on the back. And I have really enjoyed these. But I thought that I wanted some more colors. I've really used them a lot. I definitely have some colors that I use more than others. 
So that's why I purchased the Altenew set. Let me grab some of the cards that I have made with alcohol markers just so you can see some of the effects that you can get in case you're interested in trying this out. These are some of the cards that I have made using um, alcohol markers. This particular one right here, um, these are the alcohol markers from Hobby Lobby. And this was one of my very first cards. So you can see where I quite hadn't learned how to blend yet. This particular card here was a uh, later one. And this is a combination of alcohol markers, again, the Hobby Lobby markers. And then um, I've got some Jelly Roll accents with the white. Um, I, I think my blending is a little bit better, especially on the purple and the yellow tulips. So, and definitely on the stems and leaves. I think my blending got a little better than this particular one. Now this is one of my newest ones that I tried out a few weeks ago. And this, again, these are the Hobby Lobby markers. And I think that I really started to nail the blending. Um, I was really, really pleased with how this particular card came out. And these particular images are the, they're coloring cards that you can print. They're images that you can print from Altenew. And I just love to color. So I was just trying out different things. And then they turned out so well that I made cards out of them. And this particular image was a stamp that I had from the, let's see, from the April Simon Says Stamp card kit. So this is one of the flower images, and it's just on an embossed panel. So this is kind of my progression, and I definitely can say that I've gotten a lot better with the alcohol markers. So as far as the stamping today, I have two plain A2 panels, and I want to use the, this is from the June birthday card kit. I haven't used this yet. I really wanted to try it out. So I thought that we would do a um, heart-shaped lollipop for one of the panels and try that out. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a cupcake with a candle for the other panel. And then that actually has a die. I could cut that out and make a card. But okay, let's go ahead and just dive right into this project and see what kind of results we get. Because that really is the goal of this video. You know, the you don't necessarily have to have fancy stamp sets. You don't have to have fancy inks or fancy alcohol markers. You can just have your Cricut draw something out for you or you can just use whatever stamps and stamp pads you have and then color with alcohol markers that you can just pick up at Michaels or Hobby Lobby. Let's go ahead and start with the panels that are already drawn for us. Okay, so I just realized that my camera was not rolling, but okay, so I'm also noticing a couple things. The pink did amazing. Now, I don't know if this is because I'm using a heavier hand and more of the alcohol marker, but I was purposefully getting right up on top of the black draw line. Now the blending is doing well, but I am noticing some bleeding right here. I'm hoping that once it dries, that the colorless blender will take, will take care of that. So we'll see what happens. It's not bad with the Cricut ink, so it's probably, you know, me just doing 
too much in one spot. Yeah, let that dry and see what happens with that one balloon in particular. Don't be alarmed if you turn your paper over and you see the paper like this on the back side. It's okay. It's not on my glass mat. On the same panel, because this is that particular pen, I'm going to give the, let's try a yellow and let's see what we, let's see what we can do with yellow. And I'll just do that down here. Now these are the ones from Hobby Lobby. So they just have the bullet tip and the chisel tip. Not too bad. And I don't I don't see any bleeding so far. So like I said, this one may, maybe this one was just because I was doing too much in one spot. I'm not sure. And then we'll go across here with a darker color and then we'll blend that out so I'm coming back in with my lighter yellow and I'm just gonna work on blending between those two colors okay so there's the yellow one looks pretty decent and I don't see any bleeding, just like that one. So let's now, this has had time to dry. Let's go over here to see if we can lift some of that blue ink from around the edge. And I could always just grab the Jelly Roll pen and go along the edge in white. Okay, I'm just going to do a little bit at a time and, and let it dry. I don't want to saturate that area. So <clears throat> this is the these are the Alta New markers, and this is a Hobby Lobby marker. So I like the idea of being able to use my Cricut to draw images and turn them into cards. Um, and of course, I like coloring. But I could also use the stamps and the dies. So here's our balloon. So far, so good. I don't see any come in here. Do some shading. And then we'll go back and just kind of blend that out. Okay. So there's another Hobby Lobby balloon. So <laughs> Hobby Lobby balloon. So here's a Hobby Lobby balloon, and so is the yellow. And these are the Alta New colors. You can see how the the Copic is helping to get rid of the blue that bled out over here, just like that. Okay, Hobby Lobby markers play well with this ink and the Alta New markers do play well with this ink. Um, just be a little mindful that you don't overly saturate um, saturate one area too much too quickly. I think that's probably what happened there so that would definitely be a user error issue. So I'm just going to set that aside. That's one. Let's grab our party hats. Now this one is the fine point pen and I just want to see if these play just as well and I think that I'm going to maybe just look at some of the confetti and try out the confetti Okay, so there's a red one. This is the Alta New. This is the Ruby Red. And then I think what I'm going to do is maybe come in with 
one of these lighter colors to give it kind of like a little highlight spot. Okay, we'll go back to our blue. Try out my blue again. Just using a lighter hand this time. So that I don't get too much blue all in one area. Okay, so this is the red and the blue confetti. And I'm gonna let this one dry before I finish blending that out. So, so far so good. The Altenew markers play well with the fine point pen. Let's grab a couple of um, Hobby Lobby colors. Let's see. Let's do yellow and now I do have this purple from Hobby Lobby and I'll be honest I haven't used it a lot mainly because it is really dark and vibrant and I, I don't have a lighter um, purple to blend it with. So there's the purple. It almost looks black on the camera, but it is purple. And then we'll do some yellow. Do a yellow triangle. And then we'll do a yellow circle. Okay, so the yellow and the purple are Hobby Lobby, and the red, green, and blue are the Altenew colors. And they all seem to be doing well with the confetti. Just do one, I'll do one section of a party hat. So this will be that Altenew Red, it's a very deep, vibrant red right there. This is called Vermilion, and it's pretty much, it's mostly orange, and this one is a Hobby Lobby one. So um, I don't know if I'm correct, I'll have to do some research, I don't know if I'm correct about this ink be more like a ballpoint ink and this one be more like a felt tip ink? I really don't know. I'll have to research that. If you know, let me know down in the comments because I'd be really interested. Maybe I'll contact Cricut and see what they tell me. But if you know, I would love your expertise. Okay, so I would say that this is a success. I used two different pens from Cricut, had it draw it out, and I used my um, Altenew alcohol markers, and then I used my Hobby Lobby alcohol markers, kind of a mix, and I think they did really well, so definitely a win. I'm just going to move these over here, let them dry. Okay, I'm going to bring in my Misty here. Then I'm going to bring in a panel. Okay. Um, just a little tip, by the way, if you are ever not sure about placement, grab a sheet of acetate, put some washi so you know where the ends are. You can put this over your paper, stamp onto here so you can check your placement and color to see if you like everything, and it just wipes right off. Um, I probably would not use the stays on to do that unless you wipe it immediately, but all of the other inks it seems to do well. And so I just keep this in the bottom of my Misty here to, you know, in case I need it for that reason. I really want to get one of those waffle flower grip mats that replaces all of these little things here. In the misty so we'll see I really do have a huge list 
Okay, so this is that Simon Says Stamp Sweet Birthday. This is a six by eight stamp set. It's, I haven't really, here it is, July 1st, and I'm just now getting around to using the June stamp set. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do, let's see, I'm gonna place this over here. I was thinking about making a card with a bunch of these little heart-shaped lollipops. They remind me of the ones that I used to get at like Astro World and Six Flags when I was a little girl. So get that on there. Perfect. Okay, so this stamp hasn't been used yet, so I am just going to condition that with my finger. This just removes the manufacturing film that is on there. This just helps prime the stamp and get it ready to really take that ink. Okay, so next, and yes, I know that my Misty is backwards. Um, it is meant to be used like this, but I, I actually like to use it like a book. So, um, feel free to giggle and, but it's just, I guess I'm a little bit weird like that. Okay. So this is just a black stamp pad that I got at Michael's. Okay. And it doesn't do bad at all. I think I am going to stamp it one more. Actually, I think I'm not going to stamp that one more time. I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to color this. And then um, I'm going to flip this around. Because I want to do an all to new color and a Hobby Lobby color. But I'm going to leave that in there because after I color a little bit on the lollipop, then I will come back and stamp over the image so that I get a vibrant stamp outline. And I'm just going to set this aside for right now. And then let's see. Let's do, I'm going to write, um, actually... I'm going to write Altenu down here, and I'm going to write Hobby Lobby down here. I think I'm going to choose the pink, the light pink Altenu, and I'm going to do an all over, and then I'm going to shade with that same pink. Um, and I like this, I like this marigold from, yeah. This is kind of not as deep of an orange as the vermilion. This is Miracle. This is Hobby Lobby. So I'll use that one over there. All right. So let's go ahead and test this out. And hopefully I don't get a whole lot of bleeding. I'm hoping that this works well. And I'm using a light hand. I thought it would be cute to do like a little rainbow lineup of lollipops. Well, yeah, a little rainbow lineup of lollipops. And then it's got some sentiments like, you're the sweetest and stuff like that. Cute little birthday card. So I'm going to let that dry for a minute just before I go back over and do some shading. And I'm going to try and use shading to cover up some of that blending issue. <clears throat> so this is the Hobby Lobby side and we'll see. Now what's funny is something I just thought of. I have printed with my inkjet printer and colored with alcohol markers and really didn't see any um, blending issues or um, not blending, bleeding issues. So um, 
that is also an option. Like for instance, those Altenew cards I showed you, the Altenew images of those cards I showed you earlier, those were printed on my inkjet printer and I just let them dry really well. And then colored away and they um, here the I saw a little bit of ink smudging but I'm not seeing any so far on this side it doesn't mean it won't happen but so far I'm not seeing it I could watch people color all day long color and I just think it is so amazing how some of the creatives and the artists, they are so good. Their coloring skills and their, and their images, just, I could go on. So question then is, do you like to watch people color like I do? I definitely love watching craft videos. That is that is hands down. I love watching craft videos. But I really do enjoy watching people color. So I even like watching the stamping too, but definitely love watching the color. Okay, so this is the orange. It's Hobby Lobby. And I think I did a pretty that's a pretty good job. So I'm wondering if it's because my tip was precision tip and I let that ink dry really, really well. So let's go back over here and I'm going to use this precision tip and I'm going to see if I can blend out some shadow. I just have one spot here, right here on this card, here in the middle, and I'm hoping I can just blend that out. We shall see. But it's right here in that little spot. Okay, so I'm going to let this kind of hang out and dry for a minute. Okay, so then I'm going to use silver. I really like this silver color and I'm just going to kind of give a little bit of depth and shadow to the play pop stick and so that is this is all Hobby Lobby let's see let's use um, grapevine let's use grapevine for the stick, I'm just going to go along the edge here and then I'm going to actually blend that out and I'm going to use more of a precision okay so I think that that looks pretty good here is our Altenew alcohol marker with the recollections ink and I think ultimately in the end it worked out well I think probably in the beginning I should have let it dry a whole lot longer this is the Hobby Lobby alcohol markers with the same recollection stamping ink and I'm just gonna come in here and add a few little Highlight, you know, highlight spots. I forgot that I was going to come back in and I was going to stamp over the coloring just one time with the stamping ink to make it really crisp and stand out. And that's why I left that stamp where it was. 
that looks really good, really crisp. Okay, turn this one around. If you only stamp it one time to begin with, then it'll dry quicker so you can color fast, you know, color sooner. And then this just comes back in and really emphasizes the stamping lines. Now we are power finished. So you can see where those black lines are super crisp, crisp now, really dark. Okay, so now I'm going to set that there, let that just really dry and hang out. And our last panel. I am very excited about trying this this ink. So this is my new Saison ink. And after I stamp this, I am going to do like a mid-craft cleanup and that will allow that to dry. I want it to dry really well before I um, color because I would really like to not have a little blending issue like I did earlier. Okay, so we did the lollipop. And so I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a cupcake. So we'll just put these little cupcake pieces. Just put them side by side. I think that will be plenty of room for being able to die cut that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put both candles. I don't know if I'm going to use both candles. Let me put that there. Close the misty. Lift that up. Okay, get that back into the corner where it needs to go. Very good. Then we'll prime these. So I think what I'm going to do is very carefully, I think I got everything on that one and everything on that one. And this comes with this like a little protective cover. Okay. All right, here we go. All right. Perfect. Okay, I am going to set this aside and let this dry for a minute. I'm going to do a mid-craft cleanup, and then we're going to come back in, and I'm going to do a little bit of um, coloring with both brands of markers. We'll re-stamp, and then we will start comparing all of our results. These are dry. I let them dry while I did a craft cleanup, and then I did just spend about 15 seconds. I did, went over them with my heat tool, but oh my goodness, these look so cute. I cannot wait to color them. So let's go ahead. I'm going to color the candles using the Hobby Lobby colors, mainly because I do not have yellow in my ultimate. I think I'm going to start with the candle flame and let me zoom in for you. Okay, I don't know if that's any better, but hopefully it is. Okay, so I'm just going to go in here. I'm using the bullet tip on the Hobby Lobby markers. And I'm just coming in here. And there is the flame. And then let's come in. Let's come in with this was the pastel yellow. Let's come in with the pastel peach and do the middle of the flame. I need to decide what I'm going to color over here. Um, I really, really, really love this blue. All right, so this will be the cupcake, um, cupcake liner. And I'm just going to very 
lightly come in here Okay, and I'm really hoping this ink works well with the alcohol markers. It is supposed to be waterproof and permanent. I don't know if it is. That's why I'm testing it out today. But I just wanted to provide, first of all, I wanted to try out my new stamp set. I wanted to really showcase the new markers I purchased and I wanted to be able to compare options because not everybody does stamping so I wanted to talk about like using your Cricut pens with alcohol markers to color and then um, some people really like the stamping and the die cutting, the uh, manually die cutting. So, okay, so here is our little cupcake liner. I'm going to let that sit for and come over here. And we're going to do um, pink for our cupcake. So I'm just going to go around. So far, so good. The other ink that I ordered was the Memento. That's what I ordered. I was like, I know I ordered three, and I couldn't remember. Because that was the original experiment, was to have several different ink pads. And when two of them weren't going to show up, I decided to try my Cricut pen. Okay. So I'm going to let that dry for a minute. I have a really pretty turquoise. This is a turquoise green. Let's use that on this candle here. That is a very deep, juicy color. Very, It's almost like that purple. Um, it really spreads out. So I'm just barely dotting that. And I'm hoping that it stays where I'm putting it. Okay, so I'm going to let that be over there. So we'll do a dot and a dot and a dot, dot. will come in. This is that pastel peach color, but when you put it next to like a red or a pink, it kind of takes on that color. So let's take a look. All right, so these are our candles and those are done with the these are done with the Hobby Lobby alcohol ink markers. So far, so good. I think they're okay. Um, I can't tell if there's a little bit of lifting of the black ink there or if it's my eyes, but it, it looks fine from a distance. So, Okay, so now let's um, I think I'm just going to use the same blue and pink. I'm not going to use darker. I'm just going to use the same blue and pink, and I'm going to come in and make some darker tones. So where the cupcake liner folds, it should be darker. I really like cupcakes. I think they're the perfect amount of cake. Not too much, not too little. Let's cut this and then from the bottom up, just kind of, I'm just kind of flickering or flicking and letting that. My daughter made cookies this week and she did really, really well. 
she got out my, I have a book, it's called How to Cook Everything by, I believe it's Mark Fitman. And she found a butter cookie recipe in there. Y'all, it tasted like Christmas. It was so good. So, okay, so I'm going to let that just sit for a second. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to do it again along the bottom. So I'll kind of have a, like a light and then a, it'll have a medium, like a mid-tone. And then on the bottom it'll have a darker. And I'll kind of do the same thing here. But, oh, back to the cookies. Oh, they were so good. I'm hoping that she will be a good baker. Because then she can bake to her heart's content and really enjoy that. I, I loved baking when I was her age. So I'm just going along the, what would be like the top and bottom of these rows. That way I can create kind of a little mid-tone. Okay, we'll let that sit for a minute and then I'll come back and do some darker along there. So then I'm just going to come along this lower edge and I'm just doing a third layer of blue. And again, I'm just flicking that up so it'll blend all in. So this is another thing I really like about alcohol markers is you can use the same color exactly, but you can get a variety of shading and if you don't want to use, you know, multiple markers, well, you know, three, four layers way down here. And then in the middle would be like two to three layers. And then I left along the top was just the one layer. Okay, let's do a little bit more on our pink. And I'm just going to go here along these pieces. Okay. And then you can see some variation there in your in your pink frosting. All right. So overall, I think the Stazon did a nice job. I think that it did. It did a great job. And the more I work with them, the more I really like these Altenew markers. Right. So I'm going to bring back in my Misty. And I'm going to put this right back in the corner where it was. I've decided for my birthday, I might buy myself the large Misty. I love this one. But sometimes I want to work with a bigger project, and it's kind of hard with a smaller Misty. All right. I'm going to ink up these items one more time. Okay. All right. And I think I just totally messed that up because I don't know that my paper was in the exact spot. All right, let me fix this off camera and then I will come back and we will wrap up the project. Okay, I have success. So I redid the images. So I used, I did everything the same. And I did go ahead and stamp over with the stays on one more time for crisp black lines. The only thing I added while I was thinking about it was I added some um, basically I added cupcake batter and the reason why I did that is because depending on how where I position this I thought that it would be a little more realistic to have a little chocolate cupcake peeking out between the liner and the frosting instead of a white one and this time I made sure that 
I had everything in my MISTI correctly and that I did put it exactly back in that same corner. So this, this is what I was going for in the last part of the video. So now the exciting part, I am going to, I have my little baby die cutting machine. Um, it's not an expensive one. It's, I got it when I was trying to decide if I wanted a little tiny manual one, um, you know, for the things that, that I can't occasionally do with my Cricut. Not that I can't do cr practically everything with my Cricut, but um, I, I do like it. I am thinking about getting a different brand. And then I could let my daughter take over this one. Oh, my poor watch. The battery is going dead. Okay, so this is the Sweet Birthday Treat die from Simon Says Stamp. It did come in my card kit. And um, I'm not a huge subscription box kind of person, but I really... I'm enjoying that card kit, and um, I'm very glad that I purchased that. When you do get a die um, and you get these little, make sure that you get those little pieces off because if you were to poke your finger, not only does it hurt, but then you run the risk of getting... Um, blood all over your beautiful masterpiece. I'm going to cut these. And then I'll have this one. Hopefully I didn't cut off too much paper. But here we go. I'm going to put this here. And I'm going to line that up. And I'm going to grab some washi tape. Yeah, I just decided here at the end, go ahead and might as well go ahead and make a little card. I send out a lot of birthday cards and encouragement cards and letters to military personnel. And friends and family, of course. I just love it. It really feeds my soul. Okay. So I'm excited to use this set. Okay. I think, think those are in the right spot. Okay, put our top plate on. This in a run. Make sure that's suctioned down. All right, we've got our little cupcake and a candle and another candle and these are so cute. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and build this card and you know, I just keep changing my mind on everything, but it is it's going to be great. I So I brought in a card base. This is an A2 card base. It is top folding. Okay, I like those because they can stand up and be displayed. I just think they're so cute. And I brought in from the paper, the really cool paper pad that came with the card kit. I just found some of this and I thought this would help ground the image here. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is, by the way, this is four and a quarter by 11, and I just folded it in half and scored it with my bone folder here. And I was playing around with the um, print and cut stickers a while back. So I just printed and cut out some stickers 
Um, you can do this, you could handwrite it, you could get a stamp. It really kind of depends on what look you're going for. And I'm just using these up. And then I'm gonna put a piece of washi on the back just so that I can hold this in place. And let's see, I'm just gonna set that down here. I don't really want it to move or go anywhere. And then now we're gonna start building my card. And I already picked out a little sentiment. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, and I think this is a one inch by four inch strip. And I'm just gonna put it at about half an inch from the bottom. So let me grab my dot runner here. And I think really the only dimension that I'm going to use is going to be like the actual cupcake itself. Um, so I'm going to place this on here. I'm using the grid lines of my mat to help me keep things lined up nice and straight. Okay. And then, so the... I'm going to choose this candle here and I'm going to save this one for another card. And I'm just going to glue this directly onto the panel behind. I'm going to tuck it behind. And so in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going, I'm using the um, mistake version here. Oh, my mat is crooked. Okay, so I'm going to use the mistake version here. And I. While I was off camera, I went ahead and die cut just a regular white version. And I'm using this instead of dimensional dots. Um, so this is another way. Let's say you run out of your dimensional pop dots or whatever. You literally can just build up your dimension with paper. So we're just going to put this together like that. And I'm going to have that sit a little bit. I think I'm going to have it just come in about half an inch like that. And I think that really grounds the image. So I'm going to go ahead and, and I am going to, on this particular, on these, I am going to grab some liquid glue that way I have a little bit of float time and I don't need very much I just need a little to give me some float time grab my tweezers and then I'm going to just come in oh I'd say about half an inch and I'm gonna just place that right at the top so there is our sweet little cupcake. <laughs> that is so cute. And then I am going, I'm going to be placing this like about right there. So that's what I meant by I was worried that having the Y, I didn't want to have it all the way down there. I just thought having a little bit of the chocolate cupcake peeking out under there would be great. I think. I think that will, I don't know that I need two along the bottom part. I'm just going to fold this like this. And what I'm doing is I'm only going to put this along the top. Because I need more dimension along the top. Then I do along the bottom half. Like that. And then that way it'll just kind of sit up there. Now it's now it's even, so that'll work. Okay, so. Actually, I'm going to put this here. Okay, and then I'm going to use my tweezers. 
put this where I want it. That's what I mean by float time. It allows you to really move things around where you want them. Okay, that looks great. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and use this one. I don't need to use a lot of dimension. Now I've got only one layer behind the candle because I don't need a lot of dimension. And I'm just going to tuck that up under here. I like, you have to look that up. I'm just going to tuck it up under there just like so. That's going to be perfect. And then we're going to get our little sentiment on and we will be done. Okay. Hmm. Lift that up there. Just like so. Perfect. Now I'm just going to save these other little candle pieces. Okay, I think that looks amazing. This has worked out a little bit better than I thought. Okay, so now I am going, I'm going to bring back in my Misty for just a moment. And I'm just going to set that down just like so. And I thought this says sweet birthday wishes. This is... where that acetate comes in really handy. So I think that's where I want it. And that looks lined up pretty good. Okay. Rub that really fast. Yeah, once you get all of your elements colored, die cut, everything, cards go quite quickly. Okay, so I'm just going to put this on top of here and I'm going to just stamp this a little bit. I'm not worried about, you know, it being really dark. I just kind of want to see if I like that placement. I'm just going to press that down. Pull that off. Okay, so now the question is, do we want it there? We want it down here. Oh, that's nice. Maybe we want it down there. Do we want it here? I don't know. I kind of like it right there, and then the embellishments can go. Okay. I think that's what I'm going to do. Let me put this on here. All right. This is the benefit of having that acetate. You can decide where you want your placement. All right, now we're going to ink it up really good. Okay, I'm going to press. Okay, I think I just need one more, mostly really in the middle. Perfect, that, that is what I'm looking for right there. So I'm going to take all of this out. I'm just gonna put a couple here and there. I love these iridescent sequins. They make me, they just make me so happy. Let's see. One. Okay, so I think like that. And maybe just like two on this side. Maybe something like that. Okay, let's go for it. Just 
one probably should have used my washi to stick this card back down on my mat, but I think it's doing okay. Usually do not like them to move. Oh, I'm so pleased with this card. Even though I kept changing my mind, I think it has worked out really well. Actually, for instance, change, speaking of changing minds, yeah, I think the small one looks better, closer to the words, because the words are so small. And one there. Perfect. Okay, now our card is finished. That looks amazing. So we have two card panels and we used a four millimeter, 0.4 millimeter, a 0.3 millimeter Cricut pen. And I think the alcohol markers did really well. I mean, I just love my Altini markers, but the Hobby Lobby markers did really well. So, you know, you can purchase whatever works for your budget. This did super fantastic. So your Cricut will create a card for you that you can then color with alcohol markers. You could even do some die cutting with your Cricut. And then we did the recollections just this is from michael's it's just black and these actually turned out really well when all was said and done these turned out great this was the hobby lobby hobby lobby alcohol marker and this was the altenew marker and these turned out great and i think i'm going to make a bunch of these and then use them to um kind of line up like the balloons, but it'll be lollipops. So these turned out super fabulous. These will turn into cards soon. And then, then the main feature, the new stays on ink. Um, I'm pretty impressed with it. I think it'll be great for things such as the acetate and vellum, things that I do need like a, a more permanent um, cohesion between the surface and the ink but this worked really really well and it does work well with the alcohol markers I mean that is just I don't see any um, bleeding or anything I did see a little bit with the recollections over here but this seemed to do super well so if I had to compare Something like this is better than something like this for alcohol markers. And then I'll test out the new three pads that I have coming on order. So then we just die cut the, the uh, images, popped them on a card front, grounded it, gave a sweet sentiment and some embellishments. So this birthday card is ready to go. All right, well, I hope that you found this um, this video was very informative as far as the different types of inks you can use with alcohol markers. I will do a part two with the new pads that come in the mail and just different things that you can do to make some really beautiful birthday cards for your friends and family. So don't forget to um, like the video and share it with your crafty friends. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that and hit that notification bell. And until I see you in the next video, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.